Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. <clears throat> I have to try to keep my voice down because it's only 2.30 in the morning. But um, I have to, um, it's actually 3.30 in the morning for me because I haven't yet turned back my clock. So anyway, it doesn't really make much difference to me because it seems like I'm up and down all different times of the day. It doesn't really make much difference. drinking my very milky tea. I tried to make this video a few days ago, but I um, I thought I sounded crazy. <laughs> and I, after I did, I actually deleted it, which I, which I wish I hadn't done because it was actually a pretty good video. Because after I started thinking about it, I realized there's no, no way I can make these videos without sounding crazy. It's just the way it is. It's just, I sound crazy. It sounds nuts. But that's the way things are with spirit and spirit realm. You can't understand them with your human mind. You just gotta go with it. My anointing has been so heavy. Oh, well, it's always heavy. But it, 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 it changes from time to time. Every now and then it kind of eases off a little bit. And it's not quite as intense. And then other times it's so intense. And uh, in the last few days it's been really intense. Um, before the, I hate to use the word Halloween, but it, there it is. Before Halloween, it was extremely intense. It was really, really intense. And now, after Halloween, it's been very intense. So it's been ongoing. And like I said, this doesn't sound, there's no way I can make these videos without sounding crazy because what the Lord shows me sounds crazy you can, because it it it's not really contrary to what humanity teaches but in some ways it is because we have all been brainwashed and I'm just saying uh, recently I mean it goes back thousands of years right from the Garden of Eden we've all been brainwashed to believe certain things about God and about life and about the scriptures and 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 so when when God is rearranging our minds to accept the truth it sounds crazy because it's not acceptable norm okay uh, and so there's no way I can say what I have to say what the Lord is showing me without sounding crazy okay ah <laughs> hmm. oh. Um, I'm trying to, I, I better probably not try to think of what I said in my last video because if I try to go back and reiterate what I said, I'll probably screw it up. So let me just go with the flow as best as I can because it's, that seems the best way for me to, to get things out. It takes me a while to get things going, as you know. I start out slow and then I end up with a bang. Bang! <laughs> so stay with me while I'm trying to get my mind organized because I just I just woke up actually. Um, 2.30 in the morning. But uh, it's always easier for me to, to get things out while I'm, well it's kind of fresh in my head so that's why I have to do it an uh, early video. Mm. The longer I wait, the harder, to, harder it is for me to, to get my thoughts together. Um, Got to keep my voice down, though, because everybody's sleeping. Uh, okay, now what was I thinking this morning? I woke up, and I just had some thoughts. And I was thinking about fear and how... Oh, where should I start? Um... Let me just go back to what I was saying to before about Tamara. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I go there, Tamara, Ta Tamar. I won't say Tamara, but Tamar. Um, before I do that, I have to apologize to my, my Christian brothers out there. Sorry, Christian brothers. I, you know, I um, misspoke a scripture. <laughs> um, 
I'm going to give you a backhanded apology at this moment for saying that the scripture in Titus, is it Titus? About a woman keeping silent, 1 Timothy 2, 13. Uh, notwithstanding, she shall be, not not that part, but the part saying keeping silent in church. Um, I said something about that, that men don't like to listen to women well. That may be the truth. <laughs> in fact, I know it's the truth. On many occasions, not all occasions. So this is your backhanded apology. My apologies. The Lord pointed it out to me and said, you know, you need to go back and we say that because what you said was not correct. And so I said, okay. So my apologies. Not all men don't want to listen to women. <laughs> and that's not what that verse means. That verse means that women were deceived. And I've been telling you that for years, that women are gullible. And that's what that means. So in order to keep as much truth, and not to say that men are not liars, because they are. They definitely are liars. But in order to keep more truth into the church, because women like to gossip, and you know they do, and they'll believe just about anything. Um, if it's told with enough enough authority, <laughs> so, and it's basically what that scripture means. Okay, so my apologies. I, I misspoke because I was bitter. I admit it. I was bitter. Okay, I can admit. I can admit when I'm wrong on some some occasions. And okay, I was going through some emotional issues in the last couple of weeks, and to do with people not wanting to listen to me and so I, that kind of came out so that's what happens sometimes okay I'm human so my apologies okay seven minutes into the video and I still haven't said much okay well let's see getting back to Tamar I was saying about Tamar what she had to do what she did was a very courageous and scary thing to do. What she did in regards to approaching Judah and actually trying to get him to correct an, uh, a wrong in a very strange sort of way was a very courageous thing to do. She had to she had to uh, face her fears in a sense if you think about it because like I said before my last video excuse me my trippy nose what she had to do was because she knew that if Judah did not give his last son to her as a husband she was going to be destitute and probably resort to prostitution and so in a sense that's what she did and in order to show him that this is where he was leading her to in her situation and so she had to face a terrible fear fear of death she was facing death in one way or the other spiritual death physical death moral death she was facing a real tough Decision, decision. So she made a hard choice in her life, and it for her it resulted in, of course, twins, and and she became the ancestor to the lineage of David, and also of course Jesus Christ. So Hannah said she had to face her fear of what she was afraid of. in order to conquer it. And I was thinking, you know, that's what we're all doing, really. God God promises to lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. And it's not a pretty place to be. It's not on it's not enjoyable. Nobody wants to go through the valley of the shadow of death. We all like to walk through the valley of spring and flowers and trees and the birds and the bees and everything working out always the way you want it to work out 
but unfortunately, because we are all immature on more than one level, most of us on many, 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 many levels, God has to take us through the valley of the shadow of death. He has to take us to meet our fears, the things that we fear the most, in order to cleanse us of our fears. He has to bring, bring his, his church, his bride, through that valley. It's not fun. I, I don't think he even wants to have to do that in order to set us free. But it knows that that's the only, really the only way for us to be free from fear is to face our fears. And his purpose is to cleanse us of our fears, our fear of man, our fear of death, our fear of heights. I can't say it in my last video. Did I say this in my last video? That I have a fear of heights. Yeah, I've always had a fear of heights. And oh, let me see if I can find that 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 verse. Hold on, just a second. Romans. I was already in Romans. I didn't realize that. Here it is. It's in Romans. Ah, Romans 8.35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for, the, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I was thinking that that's what he's doing. He is perfecting his bride by removing her fears of all the things that we are afraid of. Everything, that, it's all its all here. Death, are you afraid of death? You might have to face it. Life, some of us are afraid of life. Angels, some people have a great deal of fear of angels. Principalities or powers, and things present, things to come, the past or the future. They all have control of us in many ways. Heights, like I said, I have a fear of heights. The depths. Some people are afraid of the depths. Seas, creatures, animals. But here he's mentioning, he is bringing up our fears in order to show us that God's love is more powerful than our fears. Even the fear of man. Where's that verse that talks about the fear of man? So I queued it up here. Ah, uh, where is it? Fear of man, where is it? Um. Let me just read some of these scriptures that I have here. Romans 8.13 for if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For many as you are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Excuse me. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so that we be so that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Second uh, Timothy one six. Where, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gifts of God, which in thee by putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. Where's the love? and a sound mind. 
um, Jude 1. This is uh, slightly different. This is talking about how God, it's talking about God's love, but it also talks about some will be saved because of fear. And that's, there's no doubt about it. But once we're in Christ, he brings us to our fears. And this is what it says in Jude 1, 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, heeding even the garments spotted by the flesh. So some will be saved because of fear. I was saved because of fear. I didn't want to go to hell. I don't know about you, but that's a good motivation. However, that's not where God wants to keep his church. You can stay in the spirit of fear, which is down here. Or you can ascend to perfect love, which is up here. Perfect love. Perfect love casts out fear. Uh, 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 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect. Perfect love. Herein is our love made perfect. This is 1 John 4, 17. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Okay. Um, Hebrews 13, 4. This is talk, first talks about marriage, which is what we are heading for. We're heading for as the body of Christ. We're heading for that perfect love. That rule and reign of the bride and the bridegroom. And he talks about marriage. And then he talks about not fearing. And this is what it says in Hebrews 13. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God shall judge. So if you keep yourself pure and keep your sexuality in the marriage, there is no, in your marriage, there is no, sin in in the marriage bed that's what it said okay um but if you step outside your marriage and fornication whoremongers people who uh, sleep around um sleep outside of you know sleep with someone or have sex with someone outside of marriage you'll be judged okay so there's that's that's quite clear okay let your and that would also include pornography okay so just let you know let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake you. So here is comfort to know that Christ, his love, it says, we shall never be separated from the love of God. This is what he's saying. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that's a comfortable thing. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So you lose your fear of men, and that is an important thing. Uh, I hate to say it, but you know what? In there's many people I like, I enjoy listening to. Uh, I grew up listening to. Um, they preach fear. Oh, uh, you know what? I have to say that's wrong. You know the church I grew up in. I don't really think that we they preached fear as much as they preach salvation. Um, I have to say that, because I, I don't really remember church and the preaching being hell and damnation type, type of preaching. It really wasn't. And maybe it should have been a little bit more than it was. But it wasn't. It wasn't a hell damnation kind of church. It was really a church that they believed the Bible as much as they were able to believe and preached it as much as they were able to preach it and they preached more they, they had a pretty secure message uh, in Christ okay um, the fear part came later when we started to realize how close we were to the end days and I started listening to end time preachers like Jack Ben MP you have to say he him you know because he was one of the ones I first listened to. Um, Hal Lindsey, a lot of other people, the fear started to set in. The fear of man, the fear of what was going on. 
and not that they were saying was necessarily wrong in all points because they although they didn't know the whole truth none of us knows the whole truth about what's going to happen and how it goes down and that's because the lord knows that we have an enemy and if the enemy knew the whole plan then then we could counter strike but he, he thinks he knows the whole plan because we've got the scriptures in front of us but even as we know as we're reading the scriptures for ourselves that there's been misinterpretation and god allowed it for a reason he allows it for a reason in order to confuse the enemy and to get ahead of him you know because you know, like he's laughing at the enemy which is why we don't have to have any fear of man it sounded when we when we first started listening to all these end time preachers myself included a great deal of fear started to fill my soul that man was somehow in control of this end time scenario and it was easy to believe because we've all been duped or because of the fears that are in us the fears that are in us that somehow Satan and uh, his minions powers and principalities were somehow stronger and greater than our God and that's that was in us it's not that it was the truth that until you can defeat the lie it is the truth I hope you understand what I'm saying if, if a lie is in you and you believe the lie then that lie becomes the truth for you and for us and we've all believed the lie that somehow Satan was the one in control of the scenario of the last days well the Antichrist is going to rise in 666 and we're all going to be marked and blah 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 we all believed it because it seemed like that was what God was saying in the scriptures but the more you read the scriptures and God sets you free from your fears of what man can do to you the more you read the scriptures and you go, oh, that's not what it really says. Oh, there is salvation. Oh, there is a plan. Oh, there is protection. God will protect his people through this scenario. Not all people will receive the mark of the beast. Christians will be exempt. Whoa, what do you know? Huh. And you find out all these things as you read, as your mind is being set free from the lies and the deceptions to see things as they really are. I had to, someone say to me years ago, I guess it's a good place to bring this up. Hmm. A family friend said to me years, years ago, he says, you know what your problem is? <laughs> we were having an argument. He and I were at a, at a, 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 a um, uh, you know, like a, like a holiday gathering. <laughs> and, um, he and I have never really seen eye to eye. This this man, he's um, a family friend, and I think this is the last time we actually spent any time together because I was getting to the point where I couldn't I couldn't hold back what I was thinking, you know me, and uh, and I was not agreeing with some things he was saying, and he said to me, "You know what your problem is." I said, what? He says, you believe everything. That's your problem. You believe everything. He thought he was insulting me. He really did. He thought he was insulting me for telling me that I believed everything and that was my problem. A little did he know he didn't, he didn't insult me at all. I felt, oh, okay, well, I don't think that's really a problem. But um, for him, it was a problem because he wanted me not to believe everything. And he's not the only one. A lot of people don't say, well, you can't read the scriptures and believe what they're really saying because it's not really what it says. And that's how, of course, Satan spins things. He doesn't really want you to believe the scriptures when you read it. He wants you to read the scriptures if that's what you're going to do. He doesn't rather you didn't read the scriptures, of course. But if you're going to read the scriptures, he's going to confuse you with all kinds of spin. God didn't really mean that. God didn't really say that. God isn't really wanting you to believe that's the way it is. So this is we're going to give you a little spin on it. And that's what you're going to believe. And unfortunately, that's where most people live. They live with the spin. And one of the spins is, of course, that we are all going to die from the mark of the beast. We're all going to be thrown into FEMA camps. And you know what? We would have. We would have been. We would have been thrown into FEMA camps if that's where we lived, in that fear. God 
through all this process I've been noticing and realizing, I mean, in myself, for instance, I know in myself, I don't know in others do, that their voices are changing. Their voices are changing from one of trembling fear of what man can do to them, the FEMA camps and 666 and the Antichrist and all the rest of it, to realizing that in Christ Jesus, we can face our fears and even defeat our fears by saying no. Just say no. You have the voice. You can do it. And I remember years ago, I said, you know, the Lord led me through all this brain surgery the Lord's been doing on me to declare from the book of Revelation that the Church of Philadelphia defeats the synagogue of Satan. I said this years ago. Did I understand the whole process? Did I know where this was leading? Did I expect a Donald Trump to rise up? No, I didn't know. I just made a declaration. I believed that it was so. I believed it was going to come through the rapture, and I believe it still is. That's part of the triumph of the Church of Philadelphia. It is the rapture of the church, because it says so. But before Christ comes and gets his bride, he's going to make sure she is fearless. He's going to give her the spirit of Tamar, who faced her fears and got pregnant, which saved her, and not just her, all Israel was saved because of her courage to face her fears. And the same thing with the church. The church is going to be safe because she faced her fears. She faced her fear of man. She faced the beast and stared him down and defeated him. And that's whom he's coming to get. He's coming to get his bride who, what does it say in, in Revelation chapter 3? Church of Philadelphia, does this go there? I didn't really cue these up. I don't know. Like I said, I'm just going to go with the flow here. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, the lineage of David, that spirit of Tamar, that's fearless, that faced her fear and did something so completely outrageous and was honored as a result of it. He that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man, no man can shut it. So the fear of man can't shut this door because you will lose your, your fear of what man can do to you because you will be in perfect love. Christ's perfect love, for thou hast little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. We faced what everything that man can do to us. We faced the, 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 the chemicals in the air. We faced the chemicals in the water. We faced them killing us every day through all kinds of different means, vaccinations and all the creepy things that these people do. And yet we have we've kept his word and have not denied his name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. That is perfect love, people. Agape. He agapes this church because they cling to him, not to man, they cling to Jesus. And as a result, they defeat what man can do to them. There is no heights, nor depths, nor principalities, nor powers that can separate the, the love of God from this church. Even though they have a little strength, the synagogue of Satan is going to come and worship. He promises he will come, they will come and worship at our feet. And because we have kept the word of his patience, the, uh, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. New Jerusalem is the name of his bride, people. Okay? New Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the name of his bride. Jerusalem is the name of the Holy Spirit because we are indwelled with the Holy Spirit. We shall also receive 
the name New Jerusalem. Okay. Now, like I said, I was told years ago, your problem is that you believe everything. Well, you know what? That's what perfect love does. It believes everything. It doesn't just pick and choose or believe what man says, what, what it says. It reads the scriptures and say, oh, this is what it really says. Hmm. I choose to believe what God says. Because what God has to say about this is better than what man says about it. Because man is always trying to put the fear, fear in you. He's always trying to make you fearful of man. Think about that for a second. Men, sorry men, I love you. You know I do. <laughs> but the reality is that you seem to want us to be fearful of man, which of course you are. And so you're always trying to put us, particularly, particularly women, in fear of man. And and then your fellow man in, in fear of man. And always, oh, I'm bigger, tougher, and stronger than everybody else, and so I'm going to be fearful of me. Because somehow that makes you think that you have more power. Okay? And in man's way of thinking, and in Satan's way of thinking, yeah, that's maybe true. But in God's way of thinking, that's not the truth. The truth is, love makes you powerful. Love is what makes you powerful and gives you power over man. And I'm going to prove that First 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, agape, says charity in this, this version, but it's actually agape, which is love, the lover-like love, the perfect love of God. Um, this is what it is. It's agape. So the perfect, remember, we're trying to strive for perfection. What is that what he's looking for? What is Christ looking for in his church? He's looking for love. He's looking for the love of God. doesn't mean that sloppy, uh, I, I do, I love, I'm a doormat kind of love because that's not the kind of love that God has. Just realize that for one second. Man's idea, we have, this is Satan's spin on what love is. So Satan's spin is that love is a doormat. Makes you a doormat and that's it. But that's not what God's idea of love. Love in God's eyes is power and a sound mind. And no, and fearless. Fearless, sound mind, power that is God's way of love so let's just get that sloppy doormat kind of love out of your head because that ain't it here it is though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love I become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal when you have the power of God what the power that Christ spoke through his love he had authority people when he spoke things changed People's lives changed, their minds changed, their hearts changed, their lives changed. He had love, and he, through his words, was able to change everything through his words. This is the power of love. And though I have to get to prophecy and understand mystery and knowledge, and though I have all faith so I can remove mountains and have not love, I'm nothing. That's pretty powerful. I mean, here, uh, understanding deep mysteries and having all knowledge, I mean, really smart, and having all faith to remove mountains, that's a very powerful person in the physical to, to come, you know, a lot of people who have this these psychic powers and gifts and, and very smart and knowledgeable, and yet if they don't have the power of Christ, they're nothing in God's eyes, they're nothing, they're nothing. Can you imagine? That's pretty powerful. Love is powerful. When you have love, the knowledge you have, the mysteries you understand, and to remove mountains, and you have love, and you, you, you put those things together, phew, the things that you'll be able to do, that's amazing. And that's what that was what Christ did. That's that's our Jesus, people. That is our Jesus. He knew all mysteries, he had all knowledge, and he had faith to remove mountains. And look what he did. On the cross of all things. Who would have, who would have, who would have thought? Though I bestow all my good goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be perverted and have not love, it profits me nothing. 
Charity suffered, suffers long, or love suffers long and is kind. Love envieth not, envy vaunteth not itself, nor is it puffed up. Doth not behave, it, behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her, her own, nor is easily provoked, thinketh not evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. It never ends. Love will never end. It's eternal. But whether there is prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall be vanished away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But that one that which is perfect comes, and that which is in part shall be done away with. So, all these things that we put so much store in, and how wonderful it would be to be able to prophesy and have all this knowledge and all the know all the mysteries, they're all they're only temporary. But what's eternal is love. The perfect love of God, the agape, is perfect. And when you look at this and you put your faith in the love of God, it removes your fear of man. It removes your fears of heights and depths and principalities and powers. Because he says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay? Um, but this is the part I really want to get to. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails or never ends. And so, where am I leading? Where am I going with all this? I was just thinking about how, like I said, I was talking about fear. And how, when I first looked, started looking into these prophetic things I was so full of fear and I know you were too we were all the fear build up oh the 666 the mark of the beast the this and the that and, the, 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 and on and on and on and on and we were all at a fever pitch of fear of what man is getting ready to do to us but the more we faced our fears the more we realized that Christ is still here. He hasn't left us. He hasn't forsaken us. And that assurance and understanding that even in this, we are more than conquerors. And that his perfect love is casting out our fears as he stands with us and we stand with him. There is nothing that man can do to us. Yes, he, some of us are dying. Some of us are being killed. My own family, I've had several deaths in my own family in the last few years. I was facing death myself. Facing death myself over these last few years. And it, been, it hasn't been pretty, it hasn't been fun to go through what I've been going through. I can't tell you how many times I've longed for death in the last several years. I even prayed for death. Even prayed for it many 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 times as I was going through what I was going through it was it's been torturous and you know what the thing that has held me on has kept me going as I stand in the presence of the Lord as I stand in his presence literally stand in his presence the thing that has kept me enduring all of this is his love that's what got me started believing all this in the first place. Realize or it, it cast start casting out my fears and it's facing these fears. It's facing a lot of fearful things. And and even doing battle with principalities. Who would have thought? I'm not just sitting in this chair have having this very strange experience where this brain surgery is going on. I'm going into visions and dreams where I'm having to face a lot of things. Face I haven't told you about many of them, most of them. Facing that red horned dragon or uh, demon, I had to do battle with him. Who would have thought? I would have never thought years ago that I would have the fortitude or the strength or even the desire. I mean, I didn't have the desire. But to be able to do battle with that horny devil and beat him? Who would have thought? But I did. 
And he wasn't the only one that really had to face the whore Babylon. Oh, I beat her too. And she's not the only one. There was a lot of other little ab ab abominations and devils and demons that I've had to face over the years. Excuse me. Just a second, I have to blow my nose. So what the Lord is doing is helping us to face our fears like Tamar because we are his bride. And as we're facing our fears, he's casting out those fears, the fear of man, the fear of devils, the fear of principalities and powers, as we realize that what is strengthening us and bringing us through these hardships is knowing that God will never leave us nor forsake us. That his power and his love helps us to endure, not just helps us, gives us the strength to endure, gives us hope to endure all things, to believe all things. It casts out our fear of man. Because Christ is looking for a bride without spot or wrinkle. He's looking for that perfect love, that agape love. He is looking for a bride who believes all things, who beareth all things, who hopes all things, who endures all things. Because she knows in her heart that he will never leave her nor forsake her. And that his love never fails. And therefore we have a fearless, fear fearless love in our God. And that's what he's looking for. That's what he was looking for in Israel. And he couldn't find it. He couldn't find in his own people that fearless love. That Tamar love. Which is why he chose her to be part of his lineage. That fearless love that says, I'm going to defeat this. I'm going not to let Satan steal from me what I deserve and what I need to survive. I'm going to face my fear of man. And she had to do that. She had, what she did was, I wouldn't have done what she did, but she did it. And as a result, God blessed her. Blessed her and made her the mother, her twins. And also put, put her in direct line of Jesus Christ. He's looking for fearless love. And we are, like I said, we, we live in a society and men who have good hearts, good intentions, who all they do and all they know how is to preach fear. Fear, 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 fear. And they have their place. I mean, there's no doubt about it. God says in in. Now it said Jude, others safe with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. So they do have their place. Okay, there is no doubt about it. They're fear preachers, hell and damnation preachers, fear man preachers have their place. God bless them. Love you. But I'm not going to live with, with you. I'm not going to live in that fear. I'm going to live with Christ. Okay, I prefer him. <laughs> I am. Um, all these years I've been, you know, like I said, <clears throat> when I was seven years old and the Lord told me I wasn't going to get married, that was not a happy thing for me to hear. When I was 14 years old and I received that, that spirit of <clears throat> suffering in my chest and my heart, <clears throat> it wasn't pretty, it wasn't fun, but I did it because I love Christ. And he promised he would never leave me, nor forsake me, and he helped me endure the things that I was going to have to face. Some things were very pleasant and very nice, but I had to face a lot of fear. I had to face some awful, ugly things. Things I haven't told you about. And I'm not going to tell you about. I've had to face some really ugly, horrible things. And but he's never left me. When I 
started this journey here, this last bit of this part that I've been in, this last prophetic part of this ministry that I've been in, it was fearful. I can't tell, I can't lie, I'm not going to lie. I, I, it was fearful when the Lord approached me and I knew it was the Lord and I was standing in the presence of Jesus Christ himself, although I couldn't see him, I could only feel him. How did I know it was Jesus? Because of his love. And believe me, I tested it. I tested the spirit many, 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 many times before I put my faith in it. Because I knew the Lord, well, first of all, you're supposed to test the spirits. You, you were all going to be approached on some level by spirits. And I knew I was just as vulnerable through all the things that I've gone through to spirits and what they had to say, in, even lying spirits. And so I tested this spirit. But in my heart, I knew who it was. But I still tested him. And he didn't. And you know what the beautiful thing about it was? Is he didn't he didn't get angry with me for testing him. In fact, it was almost like he was expecting me to and wanted me to test him. And I did. I tested him on many, many occasions to test whether this spirit that I was, who was in my apartment, my little basement suite, who I was confronting every single day, I, I had to test it. I tested it on, on many, many occasions, and he never got angry. There was no, this perfect love. That's how, that is the only reason I submitted to doing all of this, was because he brought me back to this. I tested him, I tested his love to see who this spirit is and what came and kept coming. And the only thing that I've ever experienced through the years of now experiencing this prophetic ministry, the brain surgery, the oil, the, all the rest of it, that I can only explain with my words and I can't show you, is that the spirit that has been in my suite touching my head, doing the brain surgery, has never, ever once expressed anything but perfect love. Never once, not in all these years, every day, for the past 10 years, it started in 2010, about nine and a half years now, has there ever been a moment where I haven't experienced his love, even when I've been at my worst, when I've been praying for death, when I've been praying for God to, to do something now, I'm going to go out of my mind. There has only been this incredible, patient, perfect, merciful love. It's like all he wanted to do was put his arms around me and comfort me through it. He knew he couldn't stop it. It was like, I knew that I was still going to have to endure it. Even though I prayed to, to be released from all this some many, many times in the last several years, because it's been really, really hard, really hard, harder than I can even express to you. Even torturous. It's been torturous through some of the things I've had to endure. And yet, when I stand in his presence, it's like he wants to comfort me and help me to endure. He wasn't going to, to release me from something because I he already made a commitment. I made a commitment and he was going to get me through the commitment. He was going to get me through the fearful things that I was facing. He was going to get me through the process because of his love. Because he endures all things and he was going to help me endure it too. To get me through the process it was not going to be fun. It's not easy. It wasn't pretty. I didn't like it. And yet he is, his perfect love endures all things. And it was helping me to do the same. And to believe that I could get through it too. Because I'm telling you, there are many, many times when I didn't think I was going to make it. I can't do this, Lord. How many times like this came out of my mouth? I can't do this. And yet his love continued to surround me and give me hope that I was going to get through this. I am going to get through this. Through this love, I'm going to endure. I'm going to, it's going to happen. 
just trust the process. And that's what he's teaching his church. That's what he's teaching his bride. Because his bride is going to be fearless. His bride is going to be fearless. Just like Tamar. His bride will be perfect in love. Because perfect love casts out fear. Now, <clears throat> we're going on 50 minutes here. I, I, there's still some things I wanted to say. This really wasn't <laughs> was lit, wanting to go, but for some reason this is where the Lord led me on this video. And I'm realizing that, you know, I'm not a perfect person. He's not looking for the perfection in the way we think of perfection. We always think God is this old, you know, want to keep the law, keep the law, keep the law, keep the law, do the, do the festivals, do this, do, 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 don't eat pork, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? I eat pork. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I do eat pork. Um, I just finished eating. I'm making a wonderful stew of pork and beans. I had to freeze most of it because it was so much. But that's not what he's looking for in his bride. He's looking for perfect love, which is right here. This is the summary of all things. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And perfect love casts out fear. He's looking for a bride without spot or wrinkle. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Okay? And that's why he's leading through us through all these things right now, these end time scenario things that we never thought we were going to see. We're seeing it. Why? In order to face our fears, in order to cast them out. That no man can steal her crown. Okay? How does man steal our crown? With fear. That's his greatest mode of operation is fear. Okay, the law is fearful because you know, we all break the law, so therefore we're all under judgment. But when you're in Christ Jesus, that judgment is uh, done away with because there you're not. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's also in the Book of Romans. Ah. Uh, And that is why when he comes for his bride and there will be a rapture, there's gonna it's not gonna be a fearful moment where it's not gonna be a moment of oh he's gonna save us from mankind, oh thank God we're all saved now, we don't have to be afraid. No. <laughs> That's not the scenario. We're not gonna be in fear of man and what man can do to us. And that when he comes to take us, he's gonna take us before the great uh, tribulation that comes upon the whole world, the, the great tribulation, the hour of temptation before the Laodicean church, church age, he's going to come and get us, not because we're in fear, but because we're in love. What? Yeah. He's not coming to get us because we're in such great fear. He's coming to get us because we're in great love. That's amazing. That's wonderful. We're in great love. We've lost our fear. And that's when he comes to get us, when we are without spot or wrinkle. To be without spot or wrinkle means that we are no longer controlled by <coughs> the fear of man, or powers or principalities, or angels, <coughs> or demons, or heights, or depths. We're going to be without fear. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, so, the fact that we are going to defeat the synagogue of Satan, which is what it says in Roman, I mean in Revelation chapter three, Church of Philadelphia, we defeat the synagogue of Satan. Why? Because we have kept his word and have not denied his name. And because, and the, they will know that he loved us, that he loves us with a God they love. Because we love him the same way. We are fearless. And that's the kind of bride he's looking for. Fearless bride. <clears throat> well, there's something else I wanted to say, but I'm going to have to make another video because um, there's still something I wanted to talk about in regards to something. Someone said something which I thought was really interesting, but I'm going to get to it in my next video. God bless. I'll talk to you later.